An inspiration for me about uh, recognizing how to operate in this time is George Fox's vision that he had at the top of Pendle Hill. He saw both an ocean of darkness, that's easy to see now, and also he saw an ocean of light. And it reminds me every time I'm tempted to focus on the ocean of darkness, wait a minute, I'm selling reality really short. That's not the world that God created, not one of darkness only, but instead, and notice it wasn't an ocean of darkness and a tiny spring of light. <laughs> it was an ocean of darkness for George Fox and an ocean of light. George Lakey. My membership is with Central Philadelphia Monthly Meeting, and my work is supporting people to stand up for themselves and make justice here in the world, justice and peace. So my most recent book is focused on how we win, actually, when we do. And people often stand up for themselves and win, and sometimes don't. And I was very curious in fact, it was a joy to write this book because I got to look back on a hundred years of American history and pull out, it felt like harvesting actually, wonderful examples from people standing up for themselves and moving the dime, you know, moving our country, sometimes grudgingly and resistingly <laughs> toward justice and peace. I've been traveling a tremendous lot throughout the country the last year and a half and find people extremely anxious about the, uh, the polarization that's going on in our country, the tremendous lot of division. And what I've been bringing is the good news about that, even though heaven knows there's lots of bad news about polarization, <laughs> lots of violence and, and lots of of, of ugliness that comes with it. But there's also good news. And I've learned that good news from 17th century England when <laughs> Quakers arose in a very polarized world and from other situations of polarization in which along with the ugliness and violence comes opportunity for change that's unusually large if people learn how to navigate it. I was very moved by the civil rights movement. I was a young man and got to watch that unfold at first from a distance and then threw myself into it as soon as I could. My first time arrested was in a civil rights demonstration. I was very moved both by the famous people like Martin Luther King and also by some of the key organizers like Bayard Rustin who were right in there often developing strategies for success. My mind turns toward history very easily. I'm always curious, what, where do you come from? If I'm getting to know someone, you know, where do, what's their background? And the same with Quakers. I wanted to know what historically ha have Quakers experienced. And so I went back to 17th century writing and history to find out what was going on. And I was, again, really amazed by the immediacy of the approach that people took. It wasn't only God's calling us to live good lives, of course, but also God's calling us to be part of an unfolding uh, uh, tr truth-telling exercise that we are expected to be participating in. I was amazed that, to find that Quakers in the 17th century were called to travel across the Atlantic Ocean and go into Puritan, Massachusetts and speak the truth about the, the, the liberty of conscience and the belief in religious liberty that Quakers were practicing to their cost. Uh, but to say that to the Puritans who were the Taliban of their day, <laughs> they, they had a kind of, you know, theocratic operation that was highly repressive. And so naturally, the Puritans were very unhappy about Quakers coming and called them ravening wolves as they threw them out of the colony. And so there was this entire nonviolent direct action campaign is what we would call it in today's jargon. But in those days, they didn't have that formulation, but they, they simply regarded it. Well, they did have a formulation. They called it the Lamb's War. And that's what they were, in that sense, 
waging. So I was struck, whoa, pacifists waging a war, but it's the lamb's war, which means it's a, it's, it's a different style. It's a style of reaching for truth through witnessing to it in a very consistent and escalatory way. Whoa, there is something 17th century I can use today. Well, I can understand people being very worried these days. There's a tremendous lot of tension and anxiety, and therefore welcoming the chance to go out with a lot of other people and witness to the truth. I understand the appeal of that, and I do it occasionally, but myself, very occasionally, because it feels a little bit to me like uh, like an expression of opinion, and I hope somebody's paying attention to the expression of opinion, but the expression of opinion doesn't actually yield results. What really yields results is what those early Quakers did and what the civil rights movement people did, which was to engage in nonviolent direct action campaigns. And a campaign is, is a whole sequence of actions that are done with regard to a specific demand, a specific objective that the opponent who, or the target who knows how to yield that will yield it, especially as a result of your persistence and your willingness to escalate. That is to make more and more awkward for the opponent their, their wish to stay with whatever injustice they're committing or however much fossil fuels they're extracting or whatever it is they're doing that they really need to stop doing. And that's one reason why I wrote this most recent book. It's really a, a kind of navigation guide for when you are on the river and it turns into white water <laughs> and you want to know how do I navigate this white water and come out, uh, come out ahead. Uh, that's what this is about. What, what polarization is, this tremendous, that brings about this great anxiety, it also brings about a, a kind of power, just like white water is actually quite powerful, right? It will move things, it will move boulders. And that's what becomes available at times like this. So the Quakers were right to be very active in polarized times then, and we're very right, as well as so many other people are also motivated. There's lots of people I find who are in that bookstore for the first time hungry for information on how to operate in this tense and difficult and worrying time. And there is a joyful way of doing it if we see the opportunity. I'm here at Atlanta Friends Meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, just to say thank you for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every Thursday. You can click on the button over here to subscribe to the channel. You can support us for as little as $1 per video. That button is just below me. You can see all the videos we've ever released in this playlist down here. Thanks again for watching and have a great Thursday.